Hey guys, I want to spend today's video to use DevTools, this valuable tool, to identify connection latency, HTTP specific connection latency, and just understand where are the bottlenecks in your website or your backend, to be specific. It doesn't have to be a website. Um, so let's let's just go ahead and get started i'm going to open dev tools and what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to open a bunch of websites and kind of measure their latency and see why are they taking that much time and what could be the purpose and we're going to explore uh, in this particular video this particular tab that's called security which is a little bit underrated and uh the network tab the infamous network tab i've always start with nginx i love nginx as a website because uh, it's still it's not not it's still not up to date with the latest uh, shiny stuff so they keep uh, the old you know protocols in use and i, I like to use it as an example uh, there are thousands of other websites but let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and, and go to nginx.org and hit enter. You can see that there is a lot going on here. So let's start with the first request. The first request really was an nginx.org using HTTP 1.1 as a protocol. But look at this. I think we save, we can safely stop recording because here's what I want to do here. So this is what interests me. You can see that there was the DNS lookup, the DNS lookup to lookup nginx.org to find the IP address, which we did. And then there is this initial connection orange line. And part of this initial connection, which is the establishment of the TCP connection between us and nginx.org IP address, is the SSL or as we modernly call it tls right uh, transport layer security negotiating the connection so uh this is part of this so the 411 millisecond is part of the total 500 say almost half a second actually not almost more than half a second just establishing the connection so what are we doing here so if you deduct this 150 around 140 millisecond is spent on um on just establishing the tcp connection so send synac and ACK. and then the rest is 411 just for the tls and and the main reason of this is as we're gonna see in the minute is is the the version of tls being used in nginx.org and that's why I picked Nginx as an example. And the other reason is the latency itself. If we can ping, I can't, but if we can ping Nginx, you're going to see around around 80 or more latency millisecond. Uh, they disabled ping uh, Nginx uh, the administrators. But look at this. Once we got the connections, it took Nginx around 155 millisecond to respond to us with the first byte this is called time to first byte we were waiting we sent a get request so sending the request didn't take much if you think about it because really we just sent that get slash and a bunch of headers not much right and I bet that we actually waited for an acknowledgement here because if we waited for an acknowledgement, we, this would be much, much higher than that. But the time to get the first byte is 155 millisecond, right? That means Nginx took 155 just preparing that HTML that we saw, right? When we, when we clicked uh, Nginx.org. So this is critical, right? And this is critical. So we have waited almost a second right this is a 744 millisecond to see something okay and you can see that the content download is nothing because the content is so small 
that we actually downloaded it entirely with the first byte, right? That also tells you that Nginx is not really streaming that HTML page. It just literally sending it as just a whole thing, right? And, and, and you can play with this a little bit. If you want your users to see stuff immediately, instead of buffering all this HTML page and sending it at once, you can stream this content to the user and, and the browser will start displaying whatever season, whatever it gets from the server. So that, that's what we have here. So let's go back and see why uh, Nginx really took 400 milliseconds. The main reason is this really, uh, TLS 1.2. And I talked about TLS many times in this channel. And the TLS is the way that uh, a client and server can establish a symmetric key. That's the main goal. The main goal is just to generate a temporary symmetric key. So that means the same key that I have in the client must exist on the server. We're going to generate that same key temporary just for this session so we can encrypt stuff and this key is so secure and using usually uh, algorithm symmetric algorithm like aas or chacha or stuff like that right uh, now how do you negotiate that key because you cannot just send a symmetric key on the wire everybody can sniff it right you use um, a key exchange algorithm right and that is basically uh, uh diffie hellman or elliptic curve diffie hellman which is the sexiest version it's so sexy and this these are the curve sizes and stuff like that which is so advanced if you if you want to take your phd in this stuff you can people are still figuring this out there's so much there's so much here to learn but yeah tls 1.2 actually uses two round trips to do this negotiation that we talked about and these round trips, so if your round trip time is like 60 milliseconds, right? Forget about bandwidth, right? Bandwidth has nothing to do with latency. You can have one gigabit of bandwidth, but if your server that you're connecting to takes 60 milliseconds to respond, it doesn't matter how much data you send, right? You're sending few bytes and the server's taking 60 milliseconds. So it will be slow regardless. So if you have two round trip, that's double. So in this case, we've gotten what? How much was that? We've got a 411. So if we divide that by two, that's what? 200 millisecond. So not all of that is latency. Some of that is um, the latency. Some of that is processing on the server side. Some of that is, believe it or not, uh, purposefully delayed packets uh because of this algorithm that's called nigel and i have no idea if chrome has it enabled or not so if it is enabled then tls will wait for more bytes to arrive on the buffer before it actually sends it and that adds up to the milliseconds uh, to, to, to to the total latency right a lot of people disabled nigel algorithm using tcp no delay and you can read out read on on that i mean curl disabled that long time ago 2016 i have no idea what chrome does but th that's another thing, right? Another thing and contributes to that is congestion control, right? Which is the TCP thing. Conge uh, TCP, when play, when, when it starts up, it's, it does this thing that's called slow start. And as it starts up, it's, it tastes the network. It says, all right, can, can you handle this, right? The server's like, can you handle this? And the server says, I don't think you can handle this. And the client will say, I don't think you are ready for this uh, jelly. Okay. Um, the server. <laughs> okay, I'll stop that. I'll stop, I swear. So, yeah. So, TCP does this slow start and, and increases the window, the sending window with the more, the faster the connection it detects, right? Because it cannot send a lot of data all at once. It sends few things and then it says, oh, you can the connection actually can handle more so it sends more and sends more until packet starts dropping or delayed acknowledgement then it will start slowing down so this this is called the sending window and the slow start and all that stuff so connections definitely start slow and and as as we get it's going to get faster and faster so 
So that's that's basically it. Let's let's move on to google.com. So all right guys, uh now that we explored nginx, I'm going to go to a completely different example, more modern tech and modern backend and all the shiniest stuff. And let's let's just check it check it out. Going to google.com, specifically not www. I'm going to https google.com hitting enter what do we get the first connection establishment is is so let's go ahead and stop the recording here the first connection to google.com we did a dns lookup it took 14 millisecond 15 millisecond right so my dns provider which is i believe Cloudflare took 15 milliseconds to give me the IP address of google.com, not www.google.com. That's a completely different thing. And look what we used. We used H2, HTTP2, right? So that's definitely on top of TCP, okay? And when we do that, we did DNS, we got an initial connection of total 46 milliseconds 32 of that is SSL, which is TLS, okay? We need to find out what kind of TLS version we were doing here, but it took us 115 millisecond to get a response. So time to first byte from the server. So the server, the Google took 150 millisecond just to respond to us. So that's additional processing at the back end. Uh, this is part of the, as we said, uh, the delayed acknowledgement. If there is any ac delayed acknowledgement on the server, if, uh, any any congestion control, this is all part of it. So this can fluctuate a lot. So why did it take 32 milliseconds? Pinging Google.com, by the way. Let's go to terminal. If I ping Google.com, the time right the 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 latency is so low it's 11 12 millisecond it's 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 nothing literally right versus pinging sites like nginx which i can i couldn't sub show because um, they they blocked it but it, it could be up to 70 60 milliseconds each because the server is just so far right google probably they have a server next to me here in southern california so now going back and we have this, right? We have 46 milliseconds just establishing the connection. And then additional to that is the request, uh, additional get request and all that stuff. So if I go to security now, and unfortunately, I don't believe they show me the part of google.com, right? Which is, looks to me like this is a bug in chrome because i connected to two sites here but they only showed me the quick connection right see so you authenticate using quick which is which is incorrect right that i visited two sites technically the first site i visit is google.com using h2 and that uses a tcp connection but chrome did not report that i'm gonna look that bug next here right it did not report this tcp connection which has a specific TLS. So this is TLS 1. Point, I don't know on top of TCP, which uses HTTP2. So I'm, I'm guessing they figured out HTTP2 during the TLS handshake that we discussed here. But so that's that's what we have here. Immediately we got a redirect, right? From this, remember this IP address, 142. To what? To www.google.com, which is a completely different IP address. All right. And now we're connecting to that puppy. What are we doing here? But here, this is an HTTPS server, but look how sexy this thing is. This is a quick connection. This is an H3. This is the latest and greatest final draft of HTTP3. So it, it is on top of quick. And here's the interesting part. I want you to look, take a look at this. What do you notice between the initial connection and the SSL? They are identical. And the reason is we didn't, we didn't do a, a DNS lockup because probably it's cached. 
right? And the reason this is identical is because the connection establishment in Quick is the TLS. When smart people built the Quick, they said, okay, these two things need to merge. I don't need to do send, Senac, and ACK, and then I do, oh, TLS, hello, and TLS server, hello, la, la, la. no. All of this is done with a single round trip. You do a single round trip, say, okay, send quick, whatever it's called, and, and here's the TLS hello in the same thing. So, and you take that additional whatever milliseconds. So there was a, so we said what? 10 milliseconds is the round trip time plus 10 millisecond, probably the processing time of the server. So just 10 millisecond to establish the, uh, TLS keys and all that stuff and respond to, our, to us with the certificate and all that jazz in 10 milliseconds. Again, that's all st estimation here. But that's why if you see these numbers identical, that means the connection SSL is equal to, to the initial connection. This is the whole thing. Basically, the whole time is SSL and TLS. They might as well just call it one thing here. Again, that's only applicable when you have an H3 connection, right? And the whole thing really took 122 milliseconds. And because most of the time, just to get the first byte, right, from the server, uh, uh, that's the processing time. And, you know, you can speed this even more, you know, in the same handshake, right? doing the TLS 1.3 with Quick, you can actually send something called early data, All right? Let's actually see if I can figure it out here. I think it's called Chrome Flags, if I can spell. And then if you go here, hey, it's the first, first thing. And I have it enabled, actually. I shouldn't have it enabled. <laughs> because it's having enabled, it probably it was so fast because I, I sent the get request with the TLS handshake. So we're sending the TC, not TC, the, the connection establishment with the Quick. We're sending the TLS handshake and we're selling early data if applicable. It really depends. They don't tell it till you when. But if you enable this, by the way, it's I think by default it's disabled or default, whatever that means, then it will try to send it. Right? And you can get more performance of your server if your server actually, if you're back in supports TLS 1.3 early data, obviously, right? And you can, this is a completely different beast to learn. All right, guys, uh, let's leave it at that. This was a, a longer video than I expected. Hope you, hope you learned something. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.